Okay, folks, it's snowing out, um, and this is what we do in the wintertime when we can't go boating. We cook. So right now, I want to show you a shortcut about getting cleaning off garlic cloves. But first of all, I want to explain to you habanero peppers, people think that they're very, very, very hot, but they're not so, they don't have, they don't pack so much heat when you uh, cut the white rib. The white rib is what um, actually, there are, it's already been cut. The white rib is what carries the heat in these. So um, I'm making spaghetti sauce for tomorrow. And the reason this pot looks so huge is because I learned from my mother that you can't start off small and have to have to get a bigger pan. So I go too big. So this is this is for um, sauteing the mushrooms. And the mushrooms, by the way, I don't I don't buy the buttons anymore because I'm sick of cleaning them. So we buy the slices. I pay up a little bit for the slices. I trim them and then just lob them into the pan and fry them with the peppers. And uh, the onions aren't out yet, but I, I will be putting onions in there. And then I just want to show you, I've, I've already chopped up quite a bit of garlic, but here's a real easy way to peel garlic. What you do is you take the, the, uh, that ugly piece off and then you whack it with a meat mallet. Okay. I used to do this in between newspapers and paper towels and all kinds of stupid things. But since I'm into process improvement, Carol Ann, um, I now, uh, this is so easy, it's ridiculous. And then what I do is I spray the, the, food, ch the, the food chopper with Pam so that it's easier to scrape out the minced garlic. I'm not going to bore you with mincing the garlic because we all know how to do that in our food processor. But I just want to tell you that um, that's what I do. I spray it with Pam so it comes out easily off the blades and everything. And um, this, you could call me anal, which is fine. I'm not insulted. Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm going to saute the pepper the garlic and uh, some onions and I, I also grate up a carrot to put in the tomato sauce and then um, I, I take the skins off of the sausages and I saute them and but they, they go in way, completely later. I've got to saute the vegetables first. And then, um, so anyway, the biggest, the biggest thing that I wanted to share with you guys is how easy it is to, um, I, oh, 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 by the way, I'm using two globes of garlic because um, I'm not going to use all of this. These are two globes. I'm not going to use all of it for um, the spaghetti sauce. What I do is I take some of them after they've been chopped up in the food processor and I put them into a glass jar and uh, minced and I cover them with olive oil and I call that my cheater garlic. Now you can go to the supermarket and you can buy those jars that have oil in them with the, the chopped garlic but they look really unappetizing to me. So I like to make my own and it's very easy. You just shovel the minced garlic into a glass jar. <laughs> Bill's laughing at me. You shovel it into a jar and you just slightly cover it with um, the best olive oil that you have. We don't have any kind of bad, it's all EEVO, extra virgin, EVO, extra virgin olive oil, according to Rachel Ray. And um, so that's what we do. We keep it in the refrigerator, and anytime I want to make an emergency meal or anything, like a clam sauce or something, I've got it already prepared, which really makes my life a lot easier. So that's that, and then um, lined up over on the counter, Bill and I have become big fans. Uh, Ellen, Ellen is the only one who will remember this, but we met uh, the New York Times food editor over at Doug's Dock in Greenport probably 10 years ago. Now Fred and Kathy will remember because we went to a really disgusting pig roast at his house, and Fred and Kathy came with us. But um, anyway, he's, he's a famous cook. He, we've been following him for years. And now we're on an email blast 
from him and uh, Mark Bittman and a few other famous New York Times cooks, which were big fans of several of them. In fact, Bill gave me uh, a cookbook for Christmas this year of Mark Bittman, B-I-T-T-M-A-N. You might want to look him up because he's, he's pretty interesting on how he presents his recipes and so forth. But anyway, we've got a couple, we printed out a couple of things that we're going to try over the next couple of weeks. Um, uh, it, it's, it's just really interesting, but even more interesting than, than the recipes is the, the comments that the people who read these recipes, they either add or subtract or they just comment on the recipes and you can learn a lot from this website. And um, when we do our, our blog, our blog blog, um, we will remember to give you a link if you're interested and you can subscribe to it. It, 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 it does um, put you in email jail a little bit because I think he puts them out, what, tw twice a week, Bill, at least? But you just do with them as you wish. You can store them and, and do whatever you want with them, but they're really some interesting recipes and it's a lot of fun. It's been great talking to you guys. I hope you watch this and enjoy it. And if you have any comments, we would love to see them. And uh, I'm finishing up on prepping for tomorrow's dinner. Tonight is leftover emergency meal, which I, I call one of our emergency meals, which is beautiful clams from Bumblebee. I know that sounds bourgeois, but believe me, they're very tender and they're delicious and they're slightly expensive as opposed to fresh clams so that's what we're having at leftovers over pasta and I'm finishing up smashing the garlic and tonight after dinner I'm going to be preparing um, tomorrow's meal which is just basic spaghetti sauce which I love and I'm stripping off the skin on on Johnsonville sausage and I would suggest whatever sausage you use this is a personal preference, but whatever sausage you use, I, I would say that you should make sure there's fennel in there. And if there isn't fennel, you should add it to your sauce. So tomorrow's episode of the blog for this weekend is going to be whatever's left of the snowage outside. So goodbye until then. Have a good evening. Bonsoir. Well, here it is, the aftermath of the big storm of 2016. No parking on city streets. I'm sure the school children will be left out of school tomorrow. They might hurt themselves in the snow. Hard to tell. Here it is, a good eight inches. <laughs> And the natives are beginning to come out of their houses now. Time to buy more drugs. There it is. It was panic in the city last night. Open the schools for all the refugees that didn't have any heat. Probably never paid the electric bill, but that's one reason. So, I guess we survived. What no one seems to remember is, we live in southern New England, and it snows here.